In this video, we are going to recreate the gore effect in Doom Eternal in Unreal Engine 5. In Doom Eternal, they have a give system. Whenever you injure demons, bits of their flesh will fall off. It seems the way they've created the system is by having two versions of a model, a normal version and a damaged version. And when a part of the model is damaged, they replace it with the damaged version of that model. So that's the system we'll be creating in today's tutorial. To get started, you're going to need to find a model and you want to split up its body parts into the parts that you want to chop off. So for this model, I've chopped off its leg because I'm going to make it so I can shoot off this animal's leg. And I also chopped off its horn, so I'm going to make it so I can chop off its horn. So this model is in three parts, the body, the horn, and the leg. Then for the parts that you want to chop off, you're going to need to make an injured version of that model. So I've made an injured version of the horn, which I'm going to replace when I shoot off my enemy's horn. And I also made an injured version of the leg for when I shoot off my enemy's leg. So for this tutorial, the model I'm using, I'm going to provide a link to it in the description so you can download and follow along. Although if you wanted to use your own model, you'll need to split it up into these pieces that I've said. Once you've downloaded your model, you want to open up Unreal Engine, and I'm in the first person template, but you can do this in any template. And what you wanna do is go to the content drawer, and just right click, and create a new folder for the model. So I'm gonna call this folder Cyberdemon, because the model that I'm gonna use is the Cyberdemon model. Then if you briefly close Unreal Engine, and if you're following along, the first model that you need to import is the Cyberdemon and make sure to just import this by itself. So it's called Cyberdemon.fpx. Drag this in and we just want to make sure that import animations is also checked Then click import all. So the first thing we're doing is importing the skeleton for our model and then we're going to import all the other parts of our model and when we import them, we're going to make sure that it's using the same skeleton. Otherwise, this process won't work. So if you select the cyber demon body, the cyber demon damaged head, the damaged leg, the cyber demon head, and the cyber demon leg, select them all, then drag them into the folder. And we just want to make sure that skeletal mesh is checked, import mesh is checked, and for the skeleton, it is using the cyber demon skeleton that we just imported. And for the animations, just uncheck import animations as we don't need this. Then click import all. Okay, so we've now imported our model. The next thing we're basically gonna do is create a blueprint, which is gonna be our cyber demon, and we'll make sure it has all its pieces. So we'll make sure it has the cyber demon leg and the cyber demon head. Then we'll make it so that if the player character shoots off this cyber demon leg, we will replace this leg with the cyber demon damaged leg. So, so we'll replace it with this mesh here. So to get started creating this system, if we just right click, and go blueprints and select blueprint interface and just call this gib underscore interface. We're basically going to make all the pieces that we want to damage on our model have this gib interface. If you double click and open it up, then just call this function gib. And if you just compile, save and close this. Next, if you just right click and go blueprint class, and go to all classes and look for skeletal mesh. And we want this one, skeletal mesh actor, and just call this the gib underscore bp. Then if we double click and open this up, we want to select the skeletal mesh component. And for the time being, just select the cyber demon leg. So look for cyber demon and we want the cyber demon left leg. Go to animation mode and select animation asset and just select the cyber demon anim idle. Next, if we go to class settings, we want to go to interfaces and go add and select the gib interface that we just made. Then go compile and save and go over to the event graph. Here in some free space, just right click and look for event gib. So we're gonna reference this gib event that we made inside of our gib interface. When we call this event gib, we're gonna swap out our skeletal mesh with the damaged skeletal mesh. So to do that, if we just drag in the skeletal mesh component and just drag up here and look for set skeletal mesh asset, connect this into here. 
and for the new mesh just right click and promote it to a variable and call it damaged mesh then go compile and for the time being just select the cyber demon damaged leg then if you go over to the construction script we want to just drag in our skeletal mesh component and just drag off here and look for set skeletal mesh asset right click on this and promote it to a variable and just call this mesh and connect this into here go compile and for the time being just select the cyber demon leg then we can compile save and close this the next thing we're going to do is create our cyber demon blueprint so if we open up the content drawer right click and go blueprint class this time select a character and just call this cyber demon underscore bp and if we double click and open this up for the mesh we just want to select the cyber demon body so this one the one which is missing a leg and some piece of its head here it's a bit big so i'm gonna check this lock icon and scale it down to let's say 0.5 and we also just want to make sure it is facing the direction of this light blue arrow. So if you go to select and rotate objects and just rotate it. And another thing, you just want to make sure it fits in this capsule. So I'm going to make this 0.4. And then if you select the capsule component, we can adjust the capsules half height and radius by playing with these values here. Okay, so just make it so that your mesh fits in this capsule. Then if you select the mesh and just change this to be use animation asset and select the cyber demon idle. Next, if we select the mesh and go add and look for a child actor, just call this the leg. Then for the child actor class, select the gib underscore BP that we made earlier. So it's going to be the leg that we made inside of the gib bp earlier and just select these three little arrows and that will basically move our leg into place then if we select the mesh again and go add and look for child actor again and call this head and for the child actor class select the gib underscore bp that we made earlier although this time go to the child actor template and to default and change the mesh to be the cyber demon head and change the damage mesh to be the cyber demon damaged head then click these three little arrows to move everything into place then click compile because it was kind of out of sync and that will basically make all the meshes in sync then one more thing if we go back to our gib underscore bp scroll down and look for collision and for the collision preset, make it physics actor. We basically want our gear blueprint to have a different collision to the collision that we have on our capsule component to make this system work. Next, if we just close this, and I'm just going to delete these two and drag in my cyber demon blueprint. So the next thing we're going to do is make it so the player character can shoot off the cyber demon's leg and head when they shoot them with their gun. To create this system, we're just going to modify the existing gun template inside of this project. To get started, open up the content drawer and go to the first person character and go to the viewport and just go add and look for a scene. We can just call this scene, but make sure to drag and select it inside of the first person character. Then place this somewhere a bit in front of your player character. Next, if we close this, and open up the BP weapon component. So this BP weapon component is what allows our player character to fire their projectiles when they pick up the gun in this first person template project. But instead of firing projectiles when the player character picks up the gun, we're gonna do a line trace, which will start at wherever the scene is, and it will end a couple units in front of the player character. And if that hits a mesh, which can be gibbed, we'll basically make it gib. So I'm just gonna select all these nodes and move them down a bit. And instead, when the first person character shoots, we are gonna drag off here and look for line, trace, or objects. Just right click and break the link here. 
where this line trace is going to start, we will drag in our first person character, get them, then we will drag up here and look for get scene. If you remember earlier, we made a scene, and from here we can look for get world location and connect this into start. Where this will end, we will also just drag off our scene and look for get world rotation. So we'll get the rotation of this scene, then we'll drag up here and look for get forward vector. So we'll get the forward direction of our scene. Then we just want to drag up here and look for multiply. Right click on the second value and go convert pin and select float single precision. And for the value, put something like 400. And then we just want to drag off this get world location and look for add. And this will basically make it so that we end our line trace 400 units in front of our scene and just connect this into end. Then if we drag off object types, drag off here and look for make array and just select physics body because that is the collision that we gave to the gib. If we head back to the BP weapon component, drag off actors to ignore and look for make array and just drag in the first person character. That way the system will not like accidentally try and interfere with the first person character. Then if this line trace hits anything, all that data will be stored in this R hit result variable. If we just drag up here and look for break hit result, this will allow us to see all the data about the object that we hit. And if the actor that we hit has the give interface, then we're basically going to give that actor. So if we drag up here actor and look for does implement interface. For the interface, look for the give interface that we made earlier. And if we drag up here and look for branch, if that is true, then we are going to give it. So if we just drag off this hit actor and look for give message and connect it from here to here. So if say we hit our cyber demon in its leg, then we will call the give message. And that will basically make it so it will show the damaged version of the cyber demon's leg. Then before we test this all out, if you go to the line trace for objects and for draw debug, select for duration. That way you can see the line trace. Then if we go compile and close this and play, if I pick up my gun and press the left mouse button, I should see a red line trace. If I go over to my cyber demon and I hit its leg, then we can see it will turn to the damaged leg version. If say I hit its head, then it will turn to the damaged head version. So with this, we can kind of like give our model. To polish things up, we can add some particle effects which will appear whenever we hit a gibbed mesh. So if we open up the content drawer, go to the BP weapon component, and we'll make it so that after we give a mesh, we will spawn some particle effects where we give that mesh. So if we drag off here and look for spawn emitter at location. Now I'm just going to use some particle effects from an Unreal Engine marketplace. I'll display it somewhere on the screen right now. By the way, this particle effect isn't in Unreal Engine version 5.1, so I had to transfer these particles from an old version. Just a word of warning in case you decide to buy that project. But this has a cool blood burst particle effect, so I think it's called Blood Burst Omni. And to make this spawn wherever we hit our Gib mesh, we can just drag off this location from the hit result and connect it into here. And then if I just go compile and save, and then one more thing, if you want the cyber demon to have its materials, if you just select the cyber demon um, organic base color and open up the Lambert one. And if you just drag this texture into here and delete this and go apply. And I'll just do the same for the Lambert two. I'll open it up. And I will give this the second texture and click apply. That way the cyber demon has its texture and it just looks a bit better. Then if I just go play, I pick up my weapon and then let's say I shoot my demon's right leg, it will explode and then basically be replaced with that mesh. If say I shoot its right horn, then it will explode and be replaced with that mesh. And with this, we have created a GIB system. So that's all for this tutorial. It was fun actually researching and making this project. 
If there are other mechanics from games that you want to learn, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.